Let's go back, deep in time, to the land of the giants, where there were hundreds of species of dinosaurs on Earth. What were they like? And how did they go extinct? Many scientists believe that a major catastrophe, a meteor strike, destroyed these enormous beasts. Even though they're gone, their fossils can help us to understand what they were like. Many people think that Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-Rex, is the king of the ancient carnivores. It's T-Rex's size that made this creature so frightening. It was huge. T-Rex measured 4.5 to 6 meters tall and 12 meters long. Its eyes were the size of grapefruits. Its stomach was one meter in diameter and it used its massive jaws to chew up to 230 kilograms of meat in a single bite. T-Rex had a heart the size of a refrigerator, which pumped all the blood through its giant body. Although T-Rex was really big, it wasn't the largest prehistoric creature ever discovered. That title belongs to Argentinosaurus, who measured 40 meters long. This gigantic herbivore's bones were found in Patagonia, Argentina. Babies weighed only 5 kilograms, but adults could weigh up to 75 tons. To reach full size, a young Argentinosaurus must have gained up to 5 kilograms per day over 40 years, which made it one of the fastest growing animals on Earth. Dinosaurs lived on Earth for around 165 million years, a lot longer than humans have. Some never completely disappeared. They just became much smaller. Eventually, they developed into the birds of today. Paleontologists remind us that most species eventually face extinction, and humans may be no exception to that rule. But by studying how dinosaurs lived, we might just learn how to extend our own stay here on Earth well into the future. You may have heard that some dinosaurs had tiny brains. This is true for herbivores such as Stegosaurus, which had a brain the size of a lime. Predators such as T-Rex had larger brains. That's because these massive creatures needed more developed brains in order to be effective predators. Being a carnivore, the T-Rex could eat up to 230 kilograms of meat in a single bite. This was a huge amount of food, but not enough to make T-Rex the biggest dinosaur that ever lived. That was the Argentinosaurus. Even though it only ate plants, its 100,000 calorie per day diet allowed it to become the largest dinosaur ever discovered. Despite its gigantic body, Argentinosaurus probably had a very small brain. But at that size, he probably didn't need to be much smarter than the plants he fed upon. When you hear the words giant predator, you might think of fierce T. rex. And it's true, T. rex was among the largest ancient predators on land. However, T. rex was only about two-thirds the size of the sea giant of the past, an ancient shark called Megalodon. Megalodon, whose name means giant tooth, was the largest known marine predator. Megalodon was 15 meters long, and weighed as much as 50 tons, which is about the same as 18 adult male African elephants. Megalodon lived from 16 million years ago to 2 million years ago, during the Miocene era. Little remains of this prehistoric sea creature except for its enormous jaws, which measure nearly 3 meters wide and 2.75 meters tall. These jaws were so huge that they could crush a car with a single bite. Despite its enormous size and the fact that it preyed on whales and other marine giants, Megalodon wasn't able to survive. Cooling ocean temperatures and increased competition resulted in its extinction. Today, when we think of predators in the sea, we think of the great white shark. Megalodon had a similar appearance to the great white, but it was two to three times the size of its modern cousin. Discovering Spinosaurus How one determined paleontologist found a river monster in the Sahara 
Nizar Ibrahim has always been fascinated by dinosaurs, and he's always enjoyed traveling to faraway places. As a paleontologist, he's able to do both. Nizar has spent a lot of time in the Kemkem, a region in the Sahara Desert along the border of Morocco and Algeria. This region is hot and dry now, but it was once home to a large river where amazing creatures lived. Car-sized fish, several different types of crocodile-like creatures, and a large, predatory dinosaur called Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus, which lived in North Africa about 97 million years ago, was an extraordinary creature. It was enormous, with a length of up to 15 meters. It had massive jaws like a crocodile, which were an advantage when catching prey. Nizar knew about some of these characteristics from research that had been done on the Spinosaurus in the early 1900s by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer. Nizar and his colleagues used Professor Stromer's notes and sketches, the fossils he had found, and CT scanning technology to piece together a whole Spinosaurus skeleton, a digital dinosaur. What Nizar and his team learned was significant. Spinosaurus had dense bones, feet like paddles, and small hind limbs. All of these were characteristic of animals that spent a lot of time in the water. We realized that we were dealing with a river monster, said Nizar. A predatory dinosaur bigger than T. rex, the ruler of this ancient river of giants. Perhaps the only thing more amazing than the creature itself is how Nizar was able to find its skeleton. In 2008, a local man from Erfoud, Morocco, gave Nizar a cardboard box filled with some fossils. A little while later, Italian colleagues contacted Nizar about fossils they received that were extremely similar to the ones he was given. Nizar wanted to find where the fossils came from. If only Nizar could find the man from Erfoud. Nizar didn't even know the man's name. He only had a mental image of a man with a mustache, which wasn't very helpful. Nizar traveled to Morocco anyway to try to find him. After a long, unsuccessful search, Nizar gave up hope. He was sitting at an outdoor cafe, drinking tea with a colleague, talking about how it was useless. He would never piece together Spinosaurus. Suddenly, he looked up and saw the man walking down the street. He had found the missing link. The fossil hunter took Nizar to the site, and he was finally able to locate the remaining bones for his Spinosaurus skeleton. Tuesday, August 18th. Evening came. Or rather, the time came when sleep weighs down the tired eyes, for there is no night here. Hans was controlling the raft. During his watch, I slept. Two hours later, a terrible shock awoke me. The raft was lifted up on a very high wave and then dropped again. What is the matter? Axel? Hans? shouted my uncle. Have we struck land? Hans pointed with his finger at a dark mass over 500 meters away, rising and falling in the water. I looked and cried, it is an enormous porpoise. Yes, replied my uncle. And there is a sea lizard of massive size. And farther on, a monstrous crocodile. Look at its giant jaws and its rows of teeth. It is diving down. There's a whale, a whale cried the professor. We stood amazed at the presence of such a herd of marine monsters. They were of enormous size. The smallest of them would have crunched our raft, crew and all, at one snap of its huge jaws. Getting away was out of the question now. The reptiles rose. They circled around our little raft faster than express trains. We stood dumb with fear. At nearly 300 meters from us, the battle was fought. We could see the two monsters engaged in deadly conflict. But it now seems to me as if the other animals were taking part too. The porpoise, the whale, the lizard, the tortoise. Every moment I seem to see one or other of them. I point them to Hans. He shakes his head negatively. Tva, he says. What two? Does he mean that there are only two animals? He is right, said my uncle. 
Surely you must be mistaken, I cried. No, the first of those monsters has a porpoise's snout, a lizard's head, a crocodile's teeth. It is the ichthyosaurus, the fish lizard, the most terrible of the ancient monsters of the deep. And the other? The other is a plesiosaurus, almost lizard, a serpent with the characteristics of a turtle. He is the enemy of the other. Hans had spoken truly. Two monsters only were creating all this commotion, and before my eyes are two reptiles of the ancient world. I can distinguish the eye of the ichthyosaurus glowing like a red-hot coal, and as large as a man's head. This one is not less than 30 meters long, and I can judge of its size when it shows its tail. Its jaw is enormous, and according to naturalists, it is armed with no less than 182 teeth. The plesiosaurus, a serpent with a tube-shaped body and a short tail, has four flappers or paddles. Its body is entirely covered with scales, and its neck, as flexible as a swan's, rises nine meters above the waves. Those huge creatures attacked each other with the greatest hatred. Thank you.